A 28-year-old man with a five-year history of Crohn's disease was referred to our endoscopy unit after experiencing abdominal pain and bloody diarrhea for three weeks. High-definition white light endoscopy visualized deep, fibrinous, longitudinal ulcers with some spontaneous bleeding. Eye scan, a digital chromoendoscopy technique, and magnification endoscopy help to delineate the ulcers from the surrounding tissue. The endoscopist should be aware of the increased perforation risk around severe inflammation in the area while advancing the endoscope to the cecum. Moreover, the use of total colonoscopy seems to be limited in cases of severe inflammation as medical therapy would be more suitable. Intubation of the terminal ileum in patients with suspected or known Crohn's disease is recommended as Crohn's disease may only affect the terminal ileum and can omit the whole colon, like in this case of a 22-year-old woman. This patient was referred to our endoscopy unit after experiencing abdominal pain in the lower right abdomen for a couple of months. One can clearly visualize the ulcerous lesion on only one side of the terminal ileum. In this setting, up to four targeted biopsies from the lesion should be obtained in order to collect enough tissue for subsequent histopathological analysis. Of note, Crohn's disease may also manifest as a severe mucosal inflammation in the terminal ileum, as seen in this video. In this case, immediate pharmacological therapy is strictly necessary to avoid additional complications due to the inflammation. Most patients with Crohn's disease have to undergo surgery during the course of the disease and strictures can occur, like in this 35-year-old female patient. The endoscopist has to define whether the stricture is inflammatory or fibrotic. Inflammatory strictures should be treated medically. Fibrotic strictures are amenable to an endoscope if they are short, preferably less than 3 cm, and not angulated. The use of contrast and fluoroscopy could be very helpful to measure the length and diameter of strictures. In addition, fluoroscopy enables one to follow the wire inserted through the stricture. Nevertheless, as most patients with Crohn's disease are very young, fluoroscopy should be used as infrequently as possible. The size of the balloon used for dilation depends on the appearance of the stricture. We prefer to use through the scope three staged balloons. Once the balloon catheter has been advanced to the stricture, a coordinated balloon dilatation is started. By pulling the balloon to the endoscope, one can see through the inflated balloon and assess the tissue during the dilatation process. Therefore, mucosal tears can be seen early and the dilatation process can be stopped before complications may occur. Patients with Crohn's disease also often present with multiple polyps. These polyps are regularly named pseudopolyps. This term is incorrect as they represent post-inflammatory polyps. These polyps can impede the detection of sporadic adenomas in the colon. Therefore, the endoscopist has to pay great attention to the pit pattern analysis of the polyp. Advanced endoscopic imaging methods, like in this case eye scan, may help to better characterize the lesions. Suspicious findings should be biopsied or removed endoscopically using snare polypectomy.